Hello. Yes. Well, uh, I wanted to make a, a little video about working in the television industry. I don't know too much about the film industry, so I won't wabble on about that. But I do know a little bit about the television industry because I've worked in it for like 20 years. Now, I started out training at the BBC. I was there for two years. They took on eight people out of 4,000 applicants. So yes, I must be awesome. The good thing about my training was I was thrown straight into the deep end and working on like peak time, high end, broadcasted programs on the BBC, well at least well known here in the UK, so I pretty much had to pick things up as I went straight away. Now that I'm kind of a freelancer, I really enjoy self-shooting, so I quite often tout myself out to be somebody for production companies to employ who can make, uh, who will shoot. I have a camera on my shoulder and I will film programs and those programs will be edited somewhere else and they will go out on air. Now it's a big responsibility because essentially you're somebody who's in charge of visually what is appearing on national television for the duration that the shot you're using is used. Now if you've spent any amount of time doing this like I have, that could mean a whole 11 minutes of BBC One is just your footage. So it's very crucial that you know what you're doing, you know how to get the editorial, you know that how to get all the shots so they can cut it together. What is frustrating is quite often it's not you as a self-shooter who's cutting it together. Now I'm actually experienced in producing and writing as well, but I really love self-shooting. So for now, I'm sticking with that. What's been happening is that um, you apply for jobs. Now here in the UK, we have four main websites that we can use. Well, there's really just three here. One is a website called productionbase.co.uk. One is called Talent Manager. It might even be thetalentmanager.com. Uh, and there's uh, another website uh, called The Unit List, which is one of my favorites. Now, I just wanted to be a little bit critical, tell you the sort of differences between each, each of them, because they have highs and lows. The Talent Manager has uh, a very nice, uh, uh, the way it's all set up just looks very, very nice and modern and, and chic, and I, I, I do like it. However, when they email you a new job that comes in, yeah, you click on the link to apply for it and it takes you off to your profile rather than actually then you have to fish around and try and find the job out again. So that's a, a minor thing that's irritating about it. The other thing that's slightly irritating about it is that even if you pay £10 a month or the £90 a year or whatever it is, £50, I don't know, go and check out yourself. You're only allowed to sort of say that you've got like, you, you can work in three areas. Like I've got series producer, producer director and director, I think. And that means that I will only get emailed jobs for those three criteria. I really like to be emailed for lots of other kind of stuff, like uh, I'd be interested in exec producing certain projects, I'd be interested in multi-camera directing, I'd like to self-shoot, I'd like to just produce or just direct. So there's some people, a lot of people out there who have uh, been doing this a long time and therefore are not jacks of all trades, but actually highly skilled in all the different areas. The other site I mentioned was productionbase.co.uk. Now that's a little bit more of a clunky website. I, I'm not madly keen on it at all. They do this weird thing that when you click on the job ad that they've uh, sent email to you to say, oh, here's a job that you might be interested in. You click on it and then you get like a half covered out. The advert's kind of obscured. So you always have to log in, then you log in and you go to the ad. And then the advert's kind of like, I don't know what they do with it. It's almost like an image print of it. You can't highlight the text, which is just weird. It's kind of, it's just not <laughs> helpful. Sometimes you want to do that. I don't know why they do it. They don't want you stealing the ads and giving them to other websites. It's highly competitive, but it's not like customer driven. Something that has been happening on these websites is that they haven't been, to my, in my opinion, very well policed in that people are putting adverts up there, which just aren't fair. Like, for example, the talent manager will have, has, ha, has, has had, or have a system where is they specify the type of program that you probably or must have worked on before in order to be uh, viable to apply for that advert. So that might be like very specific program by name. You must have done uh, Dispatch as part of the documentary Dispatches series before, which is kind of like, okay. Or you must have done, um, you must have worked on reality TV show before. Now, I can understand in a way that it's really helpful if you've got people who are familiar with formats, but it shouldn't matter. People shouldn't necessarily be discriminated against because otherwise, well, put it this way, if you're like me, if you're somebody who's looking for that work, you're pretty, I think, foolish if you just focus on one genre of television. If your CV is just doing reality TV shows, that's all you're gonna be doing. And I can assure you that your lifespan of that career is maybe gonna be like 10 years max. I point my camera at stuff and I record editorial. And I need to, 
I should, that, should, that is compatible pretty much with anything that requires a camera being pointed at stuff and editorial. Now you can get snobby about it saying, yeah, well, you know, we're a high-end documentary. We don't really want somebody who's used to running around with the police. That's, that's fine. What you're, look, what you're saying there is that you're looking for a skilled cinematographer type DOP. That's absolutely fine. Maybe, maybe I am that. It's kind of like you have, TV production, when they advertise, take the shortcut. They always advertise for jobs that are going to be happening the next week. They want people to start the next week. So it's very difficult to, they're not planning. Recently, I've been discovering a little bit of discrimination. My, my most recent one was just this morning where uh, an advert on the production base website uh, was, uh, was an advert placed by, it looks like a fairly new startup company that are making a movie. And the advert started with, we are looking for a director who is sympathetic with the Christian faith. Yeah, so do you believe in God then? I do not. All right, mate, in that case, fuck <laughs> off. Well, I do not know where you live, but here in the UK, we have laws which prevent you from discriminating against people when it comes to employment. You can't discriminate against people based on the fact that they have no religion. It's against the law. If I went for a job ad and said, and they said, oh, are you sympathetic to Christian faith? I say, yeah. They say, oh yeah, well, what sort of interest do you have? Well, I'm a member of the Humanist Association, therefore, which is an atheist organization. So yeah, I do that, yeah. Oh, right, okay, well, thanks very much for coming. You can guarantee that the thinking behind putting that little caveat in there is one that says, if you're an atheist, we probably would rather go for somebody who's been on a mission through Africa. The point is, this advert went out there. The policing of advertising for TV production is pretty, pretty poor. And um, I always find it kind of upsetting. I've also applied for jobs where I've been asked how old I am. And I'm really, really old. I'm like a million. Uh, and you know, I can only barely manage to lift up a camera and carry it. And you know, my brain is addled now and I can't think straight or quickly anymore. Yeah, I know I have 20 years of experience in working out ways that we can work quicker and more efficiently and how to get the best out of contributors and X, Y, and Z. I know I've got all that, but if I can't physically pick up the camera and I'm walking down the street like an old man, I'm not gonna be used to your production, am I? Or is it just that you wouldn't feel comfortable bossing about somebody who's older than you? Re experience is a big threat to a production company. One, they might think that you might leave. They think, oh, he, he might leave quite quickly because he'll soon work out that we're a bit crap. And quite often they are. There's this lack of policing. There's no ombudsman watching these, the, the way that television work is being advertised here in the UK. I'd be interested to know what you think. What, what's it been like for where you are? Um, do you think that um, you should only be considered for a job if you specifically worked in that type of program before? You should only go to Africa to film elephants if, if you've been already been to Africa filming elephants. Do, do, do you think that is the case? Because if you do put that you've done that and you question it and you challenge it, um, you, you could have a strike put against you. If the employer complains, oh, he applied for this job and he wasn't what we said we wanted, you can have a strike against you, three strikes, and they will wipe out your account and keep your money. Something else that is just blatantly wrong is I visas. Now, in order for somebody in the UK to go and work, or go and work as a producer, director, entertainment, media, uh, reporter type person, journalist in the US you need what's called an I visa now in order to get an I visa you I'd have to go to the American Embassy here in London and I have to have to show them sort of some sort of documentation which illustrates very clearly that I have a job to go to and I am not just going there to go and film stuff and try and get into the country kind of illegally as it were I've done this once before I've had an email from a commissioner at the BBC saying I'm interested in your idea it'd be worth developing it with another production company on the basis of that I thought right okay I need to get some more interview material about the topic that, I, that, that, that I've got uh, and that means going to America and doing an interview with somebody now uh, I was completely prepared to self-fund that uh, I went to the American Embassy with the email from the Commissioner of the BBC and they wouldn't accept it. Now, forget about the fact it cost me £180 to get that interview with, at the American Embassy. They said, no, that's it. Two minutes, they decided. Two minutes, no, nah, see you later, you're not going. <laughs> On this website, the production, the talentmanager.com, they say that um, you have to meet the criteria of the job ad. And sometimes job ads specify that you must have an I visa. Now you can't get an I visa unless you've got a letter from a production company saying that they want you to go and do the work because it's hassle for them. So all the ads, so many of the ads, so many of them, and I'm telling you, like all of them virtually, 
are basically saying you must have an I visa. But you can't get an I visa unless they write a letter to say we want this guy to go to America and do some filming. So it's a total catch-22. Where are people supposed to get I visas from if the production companies are insisting that you already have one when you apply for the job? It, 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 it's, it's so frustrating and it shouldn't be. It's, it, it's wrong. It's just wrong. They should kind of like plan better and go, okay, we need somebody to go to America in a couple of months time. Let's make sure we get somebody and get them set up with an I visa now. But no, what they do is to say, we need somebody to go to America next Tuesday, so they must already have an I-Visa, and we're leaving it very late because we don't really care about that role. I am very conscious of the fact I sound like a bitter old fart <laughs> complaining about the TV industry here in the UK. I'm not. I think that the industry in the UK is, is superb. It has faults, and I kind of like that it does to a certain extent because that gives, if everything was nice and smooth and perfect, I wouldn't be on YouTube. <laughs> I would have nothing to talk about. So I'm kind of quite happy for the industry to have its flaws right now, but I'm also quite happy to flag them. Now, it could be that I'm talking crap and you don't believe a word of what I'm saying or think that what I'm saying is relevant. Write something down in the comment. Don't be personal, don't be nasty. There's no need to be like that. Just say what you think, what's been your experiences. I'm genuinely interested, genuinely interested to know or hear from anyone who wants to work in film or television, doesn't know how to go about it, or who have had a negative response, uh, even though they think that they were perfectly suited for it. I would happily give advice if advice is what is being wanted. Thank you uh, again, as ever, for watching. Um, I'm at Fluctibus Flood on Twitter if you want to uh, drop me a line there or leave a message or comment down below. Uh, be nice. It's War of a Duck's back, I couldn't give a shit. <laughs> but by all means, write it. It goes. If you're interested, if you're a sensible person, write me a proper message. I'll have a proper conversation with anyone who's willing. And I hope you have a great rest of your day. Go watch some more of the videos. The more. Oh, and subscribe! I, I, I know everyone says that, but I have to say it. Please do subscribe. It helps me out a whole deal. Um, and also, I've got a whole bunch of other uh, channels as well. I've got my gaming channel. Um, I love to do a bit of gaming. I also have my vlogging channel where I wander around with a camera all day and share my life with you as a, a freelance television producer working here in the UK. So, so let's kick it off. Let's get going with the very first Room 101. Okay, so uh, what do I want? What's the very first thing? I want to put into room 101 and I have thought about it uh, but just not very hard uh, and the first thing I want to put in is yep children